Hello judges, welcome. I'm so excited to be here today and share with you an amazing lot of experience. And all the great experiences start with the European coffees. Coffees that challenge our expectations. And coffees I tried this year from the Master's Coffee Stay definitely challenged my expectations. What a coffee to taste like. So, today we will taste the same anaerobically fermented Gaysa varietal produced on the same coffee state, but to different altitudes. Are you ready? Let's begin. The unique microbe made of each altitude can affect the flavor of the coffee, making the experience of drinking these two geysas vastly different. It's fascinating to see how the same coffee variety can showcase such a wide range of flavors and aromas depending on where it's grown. So, today, for your special calls, we will travel to 2,000 meters above sea level. Inside Volcan Baru National Park in Poket, Panama, where early day stages are located. Elida is surrounded by a natural forest reserve which provides, safe and protects the geyser trees from the drastic temperature changes during the day. This reinforces the root system of the tree which is responsible for the distinct jasmine aroma in the garden. And the volcanic soil allows the root to grow deeper into the ground, reaching for more nutrients and specifically nitrogen which brings out even more complexity of flavors in the final cup. The Lamas family have been experimenting with coffee processing since 1918. To develop the full potential of their Geisa, they designed their own custom built bioreactors. Let me tell you more. After ripe cherries are picked and immediately placed to ferment into a sealed stainless steel tank called bioreactor. During the fermentation, cherries release their own juice, known as mast. The mast inside bioreactor is packed with microbes and yeast from a little terroir which create a unique flavor profile of this coffee. And after the seven day fermentation, coffee develops an amazing malic acidity and peach flavor note. And to see all these flavors develop during the fermentation inside the bean, La Mastus dry the cherries on raised African beds slowly for 40 days. This also locks in the aromatics inside the seeds, ensuring also a clean finish in your expression. For my recipe for today, I'm using 22, gra 22 grams in, and I will extract 46 grams out. To bring all these flavors in perfect balance, we roast the coffee for 12 minutes and 10 seconds with final temperature 210 degrees. For your flavor profile, please note you will enjoy flavor soap, apricot, jasmine. Peach and mango. This recipe will give you a bit of way, a juicy coating texture, and a long clip and a long sweet finish. Sorry.
please, evaluate the crema. Use a spoon still for six times before you try it. The small glass in front of you are for your spoons. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Are you okay? Are you ready? So, for your big beverage scores, if you could, please write down. You will enjoy flavors of apricot custard, butter cookies, and hints of jasmine. For this course, we will travel down to 1,700 meters on the same exact stage where El Boulevard is located. The colder winds at this altitude create a much colder and drier environment, putting the geyser trees under a lot of stress during photosynthesis. But that stress prolongs the maturation of the cherries for one month longer, allowing them to develop more mildly acidity. To highlight the fruit character of this case, we roast the coffee for 22 profile for 11 minutes and 40 seconds with 208 degrees in temperature. I steamed my milk up to 55 degrees to bring out a custard milk in your milk beverage. If you miss anything, you have all the information in my card. Once again, for your flavor note, butter cookies, apricot custard, and pizza jasmine.
please enjoy. For my signal to drink, I would like to enjoy the full flavor spectrum of La Marche from the stage. To highlight the florals of this geisha that I really love and that we find with an amazing grapefruit character, I am led to purchase a little geisha with one portion of the Liguro geisha. However, this geisha blend can bring the acidity of the coffee a bit out of balance. For that reason, back in the lab, I took blueberries. Now, blueberries can also have a different flavor profile depending on the microclimate and the attitude they grow. So, I work with a, with a local producer from La City, from La City and I took one part of blueberries grow at 100 meters above sea level that has more fresher and more lively acidities. And two parts of blueberries grow at 50 meters above sea level that have richer and more juicier taste profile. I blend them and I added two percent salt in an anaerobic environment and to lack of ferment for 120 hours. And when I add 20 grams of that liquid into my four shots of espresso, creates, it creates a new flavor of blueberry muffin. I then, okay, okay. I then, I make cold brew whole blue tea, 20 grams with 200 grams of water for 6 hours and I mix it with 1 to 1 ratio, 20 grams, 2 grams of, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, of simple honey syrup and I infuse it with 5 grams tonga beans for 10 hours. And when I add 20 grams of that liquid into my bottle of espresso, it creates a new note of red wine. I blend them together to homogenize the flavor. And I will serve you at around 10 degrees. For more creamier texture. Blueberry muffin, red cherries, red wine, and vanilla and tonka aftertaste with a very good texture. Please enjoy, 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 enjoy. Time.